Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Reading from Shima Bhattam, 7th Canto, Chapter 8 the Lord slays the king of the demons. Text 27, 28. 27 has no purpose. Oh, sorry, 28, 29. Okay, thank you. Still the effect of, uh, uh, what do you call? Jet lag. <laughs> Jet lag effect. Hare <laughs> Krishna. So, 28, I just read the translation. Making a loud, shrill sound of laughter, the Supreme Personality of God, Narayana, who is extremely strong and powerful, captured Hiranyakashipu, who was protecting himself with his sword and shield, leaving no gaps open. With the speed of a hawk, Hiranyakashipu moved sometimes in the sky and sometimes on the earth, his eyes closed because of fear of the Singhadev's laughter. Text 29. Okay. Vishbhaks Purantam Grahana Turam Harir Vyalo Yata Kum Kuli Shakshata Twacham Dwari Urum Apatya Dadara Lilaya Nakaryata Him Garudo Mahavisham Vishbaks Purantam Grahana Turam Harir Vyalo Yata Kum Kuli Shakshata Twacham Dwari Urum Apatya Dadara Lilaya Nakaryata Dim Garudo Mahavisham Vishbaks Purantam Grahana Turam Harir Vyalo Yata Kum Kuli Shakshata Twacham Dwari Uruma Patya Dadara Lilaya Nakar Vishbak all around Spurantam moving his limbs Grahana Aturam afflicted because of being captured Hari the Supreme Personality of Godhead Nrsingha Deva, Vyala, a snake, Yata, just as, Akum, a mouse, Kulisha Akshata, not cut even by the thunderbolt thrown by Indra, Tuacham, whose skin, Dwari, on the threshold of the door, Urum on his tide, Apatia, placing, Dadara, pierced, Lilaya, very easily, Nakai, with the nails, Yata, just as, Ahim, a snake, Garuda, Garuda, the carrier of Lord Vishnu. Mahavisham, very venomous. As a snake capture a mouse, or Garuda captures a very venomous snake, Lord Nrsinghadev captured Hiranyakashipu. 
who could not be pierced even by the thunder, thunderbolt of King Indra. As Hiranyakashipu moved his limbs here and there and all around, very much afflicted at being captured, Lord Nisimhadeva placed the demon on his lap, supporting him with his type, and in the doorway of the assembly hall, the Lord very easily tore the demon to pieces with the nails of his hand. Purple. Hiranya Kashipu had received from Lord Brahma the benediction that he would not die on the land or in the sky. Therefore, to keep the promise of Lord Brahma intact, Nrsinghadev placed Hiranya Kashipu's body on his lap, which was neither land nor the sky. Hiranya Kashipu had received the benediction that he will not die either during the day or at night. Therefore, to keep this promise, of Brahma, the Lord killed Hiranyakashipu in the evening, which is the end of day and the beginning of night, but is neither day or night, nor night. Hiranyakashipu had taken a benediction from Lord Brahma that he will not die from any weapon or be killed by any person, dead or alive. Therefore, just to keep the word of Lord Brahma, Lord Nersinghadev, pierced Hiranyakasipu's body with his nails, which were not weapons and were neither living nor dead. Indeed, the nails can be called dead, but at the same time, they can be said to be alive. To keep intact all of Lord Brahma's benedictions, Lord Nursinghadev paradoxically, but very easily killed the great demon Hiranyakasipu. Oma Gyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshuru Militam Yena Tasma Shri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stabitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakala Mahyam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Utapadakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatam Bitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Bitam Shcha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Brindavanishwari Prishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Bancha Kalpataro Vyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyayevacha Patitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namo Namaha Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So, Wonderful Leela. We don't, we don't get tired of repeating the same Leela again. How many times we hear Hiranya Kasipu being captured and killed by Lord Narsinghadev? Still, every time we hear about it, it's fresh. That's, that's the nature of a spiritual life. That's the nature of Lord Krishna. Everything about him or his avatars is always fresh. It's because it's eternal. Huh? So, uh, very nice uh, metaphors are here also, like, like a snake capture a mouth, or Garuda capture a very venomous snake. Uh -huh. So, once uh, Narad Muni was visiting Vrindavan, and he was telling Nanda Maharaj the glories of the river Ganga, Ganga uh -huh. holy river. And he was telling him that once Garuda captured a snake to eat it. And he was flying over Ganga Devi. 
But some or other, the snake split from his grab and fell on, on the river Ganga. As soon as the snake touched the water, died and took the form, four armed form, and went back to Vaikuntha. <laughs> so when Nanda Maharaj heard that, he wanted to do pilgrimage to Ganga <laughs> immediately. He wanted to go oh, very far away. Haridwar has to go uh, up there. But Lord Krishna didn't want his father to make such, uh, you know, endeavor, very great endeavor. So Lord Krishna, with his mind, brought Ganga to here to Brindavan. That's Manasi Ganga. Uh -huh. So, uh, Garuda, I mean, that's his natural food. He's pure Vaishnava, but he's still not vegetarian. <laughs> he's an eagle. He has to eat his, uh, the food according to, to his nature. Huh? He eats even elephants. He's very big, powerful eagle. The carrier of Lord Vishnu. You know, once Garuda came to Vrindavan, because he heard Lord Krishna is here, so he came to offer respect, you know, for his obeisance to the Lord. And the Lord was pleased to see him. So, he, he, Krishna asked Garuda, you ask me any blessing you want. Uh, and Garuda said, first he said, are you the same Lord Narayan that I carry on me, on Lord Vishnu? He said, yes. Do you want to see my four-armed form? And Garuda said, no, I want to see your 12-armed form that once you show to the 12 months of the year. I would like to see that form. Uh, so Krishna smiled, yes, and he showed the 12-armed forms to Garuda. Gaur <laughs> uh, Mohande, Prabhupada's father, used to say that God has... 12 arms. If he can give you how much you can carry in, in your two hands. And if he wants to take away from you, how can you prevent him from, with your, your two hands? <laughs> huh? So anyway, uh, Krishna told Garuda, that's very nice you came. Uh, will, will, will you take me around the Yamuna, I would like to have a ride on you on the Yamuna. And Garuda said, my dear Lord Krishna, I'm very sorry, but I can't go to the Yamuna. Because of Sobari Muni's curse, I'm not allowed to go there. So please forgive me. <laughs> so he paid his obeisance and left. But then Sridam, Radharani's brother, told Krishna, Krishna, if you want me, I can assume the form of Garuda and take you there. I have no problem. I'm not afraid of the Sobari Rishi. Krishna said, that's a great idea. Sridam immediately took the form of Garuda and Krishna climbed on his back. There is a temple in Braj called Garu Govind. Uh, you see the deity, Krishna riding on uh, Garuda with 12 arm form. Uh, so, uh, and actually, uh, in the Brihabhagavatamrita, that is explained that uh, the associate of Lord Krishna and Goloka, they have their expansions in Vaikuntha and also in the heavenly planets when Krishna uh, is going to come to the earth planet. Mm -hmm. So the demigods who come to take part in Krishna Lila are not ordinary demigods, but actually expansions of the eternal associates of the Lord. Now, Garuda is in Vaikuntha. So who, 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 who expanded Gar himself as Garuda from Goloka? Any ideas? Huh? It's a very, very funny friend of Krishna. Madhu Mangal, yes. Madhu Mangal expanded uh, himself. No, no, wait a minute. Did I say? No, Sridam, Sridam. No, Madhu Mangal expanded himself as Narad Muni, actually. Well, to tell you the secret, it's a secret, an open secret. 
Actually, Narad Muni is partially a, a conditioned soul who became liberated and partially eternally liberated soul. How is that possible? How can such a thing be possible? Well, at the time he became liberated, became Narad Muni, an Amsha, a part of Madhu Mangal, entered him. So he's both at the same time. I mean, that's uh, chintya shakti, inconceivable. Uh, once once uh, a man told me, you Gaudiyas are very tricky. Every time there is something difficult to understand, you say, achintya, achintya, achintya. You, you solve everything with achintya. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, so the pastime of killing Hiranya Kashipu, uh, uh, actually, as you all know, uh, Hiranya Kashipu was doorkeeper, no? uh, he and his brother, Hiranyaksha, Jai Bijai, mm? they were cursed to fall to the material world by the Kumaras. Now, when Lord Narayan came, they asked for protection. And the Kumaras felt guilty that we cursed the associate, the servants of the Lord, so they wanted to withdraw their curse. They offered, please, Lord, oh, forgive our offenses, we want to withdraw the curse. So said, no, you are a great sages, your word must be true. So I'm going to offer my servants two options. Be born seven times as devotees, or three times as demons, then come back to Vaikuntha. They can choose. Now the question may arise, I mean, isn't better to be seven life as a devotee? After all, it's not much difference, only four more lives. It's not a big deal. Uh, why they choose to be demons rather? Just to return faster to Vaikuntha? No. That was not the real reason. The real reason they discussed between themselves before deciding why the Lord is offering us to return faster as demons than devotees. What is the reason? The Lord must have some reason. Finally, they understood, because they're very intelligent, they understood the reason. And they went to the Lord and asked Him, or oh, dear Lord, please, please, Give us a very evil mentality so we can give you a very good fight. <laughs> uh, they, they understood the, the Lord's desire to fight. I mean, uh, all qualities, uh, all tendency you, we humans have are originally in the Lord. We have also a tendency to fight. Uh, but the Lord uses anger as fighting his spirit only to protect his devotees. Otherwise, he will not be angry. Uh, he will not fight unless his devotees are in danger. To protect them, he immediately takes action. Now, that's a very, very surrendered attitude of Jai Bijai that, I mean, if that pleases the Lord, for us to become demons and enjoy killing us, so be it. If that give pleasure to the Lord, that's full surrender, Atman Vedan, isn't? Yeah, Sri Radha, Shyam Sundar. Prabhupada said we, we can chant this mantra in this temple. Nitai Gor Radhe Shyam Jaya Krishna Balaram. Repeat. Nitai Gor Radhe Shyam Jaya Krishna Balaram. Only one jai <laughs> with Balaram <laughs> to rhyme better. Anyway, so that's a very surrendered attitude, you know. Um, this reminds me one real life story when Iran had a king before the Islamic Revolution. There was a Shah. Shah was a king. So this king, the Shah, was invited to England for diplomatic relationship. No? 
So to, to entertain the king and his ministers and, you know, servants, everybody, they took him to different palaces and mu museums, you know, try to entertain, you know, to please him so they keep good relationships, uh, diplomatic and business, all these things. So they went to one museum and, and the Shah became uh, uh, attracted to one artifact. He, he was like very much interested to know what was that. So he asked, what is this machine for? What is called? And they told him, this is a guillotine. This is, was used to cut off the heads of criminals. He said, wow, that's very interesting. I would like to see how it is done. He called his servant, Ahmed, come, put your head there. And the servant came to put his head there. The government official, the British government official, no, no, please, please, this is not allowed and by the law of England. It's not allowed such exhibition. We're sorry, you know, please forgive us. <laughs> so the Shah said, then you don't understand what is a king. <laughs> a king means the servant is ready to give his life to please the king. Uh, it's like a slave, you know. So imagine that that is the idea of about spiritual life. We are, we are aspiring to become Krishna's slaves. He can do with us whatever he wants. Are we ready to do that? Are we ready to surrender like Jai Bijai surrendered and accepted what it pleases the Lord the most, not themselves? So that's very important lesson from this incident. Mm -hmm. And also, how Krishna loves his devotees so much that he wanted to keep Lord Brahma's uh, blessing intact. Uh, because Brahma gave blessing, so he, he wanted to keep them, kill Hiranyakashipu without breaking those blessings. So that's that means Krishna is protect the world of his devotees more than his own world. Mm -hmm. You know, in the in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna told Arjun, "Kanteya pratijanehi namevakta pranashyati." Declare it to the whole world: my devotee will never perish. Why Krishna didn't declare himself? Why is asking Arjuna to declare? Because if his devotee do it, he will be much more obliged to fulfill his devotee's word. Because remember, in the Kurukshetra war, Krishna was willing to, to break his promise not to fight. When, when, when Bhishma Dev was fighting Arjuna so powerfully, he was, Arjuna was desperate. He was wounded all over. So our Krishna... Uh, stepped down his chariot and took a broken wheel and was at going to attack Bishmadev, breaking his promise. Now, Bishmadev was in ecstasy. He was a pure devotee also. Uh, here is the Lord coming for me. I mean, uh, he was very happy. Arjuna was trying to stop Krishna by grabbing his legs because Arjuna didn't want the Lord to break his promise because of him. But actually, Krishna wasn't doing that just to protect Arjuna, was also to protect Bhishma Dev's word. Because Bhishma Dev that day made a promise that he will fight Arjuna so severely that he will force Krishna to break his promise. So for Krishna, the word of his pure devotee was more important than his own word. So he was ready to... Huh? That reminds me of another incident in Mahabharat uh, when there was an attack on Yudhishthir Maharaj. Arjuna was supposed to protect his brother all the time. But some or other, they diverted him to fight in other places, challenging him, carrying. So he was not able to be next to his brother Yudhishthir. So Karna took advantage of that and was attacking severely Yudhishthir Maharaj, wounding him all over. When finally Arjuna was able to 
come to help his brother Yudhishthir. Yudhishthir was very angry at Arjo. You left me alone. See how all wounded and like that. What is the use of your Gandiva bow? It's garbage. Throw it to the garbage can. You know, what is, is, is useless. Now when Arjuna heard that, he took off his, his sword. Uh, he was walking to Arda's brother, uh, Yudhishthir Maharaj, because Arjuna made, made a promise that whoever insults his Gandiva bow, he will either kill the person or kill himself. So Krishna asked Arjuna, what are you going? Well, I made this promise. Are you going to kill your own brother? No, no, I'm going to kill myself in front of him so he will know why I'm killing myself. I'm going to explain to him the reason. And Krishna told him, what kind of fool are you? If you kill yourself, how your brother is going to win this war? He depends fully on you. You can't kill yourself. Then what about my promise then? I can't, you know, uh, tell lies, you know. I made this promise, I have to do it. Krishna told him, don't worry. In the Shastra it is said, if you praise yourself, it's like killing yourself. So just praise yourself, and that's like killing yourself. <laughs> So, uh, uh, what is his name? Chanakya Pandit. He said, in the forest, the straight tree are cut first. <laughs> Those who are uh, twisted, they are left alone. <laughs> so, that means we have to understand the essence of the teaching, not blindly follow, but according to time, place, circumstance, know how to adjust. Following Shastra, of course, or authority in Shastra, Guru Sadhu, we shall not concoct, you know, our own ideas, or uh, we should always, you know, but uh, using the intelligence, not surrendering the intelligence, but surrendering through the intelligence. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, it's interesting that Prabhupada is saying that the nails can be either dead or alive. Well, to give you an idea how is that possible, that can be both. They are dead because when you cut them, you feel no pain. Uh, any other part of the body, if you cut, great pain. But the nails, no, you don't feel no pain. It's like dead. But at the same time, they're alive because they grow up. So they're alive. <laughs> Could be both things at the same time. Using logic, huh? Using logic. We have to use logic. Common sense, Prabhupada said. So, of course, we can uh, go on. Uh, but I would like also to hear from you if you have any comment or questions. So, please do. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj, um, for your nice talk. Um, but somebody may say in the world, all this talk about death and killing, cut out, cutting off of heads, and so on, uh, this is already going on in the world. What we need in the world is peacefulness, yes. harmony, and understanding. But your Krishna consciousness movement is since uh, it was spoken on the battlefield, Bhagavad Gita, yes. all this talk that you gave about cutting heads off and guillotines, <laughs> this is not what <laughs> the world wants today. It didn't happen, the cutting of the head didn't happen. Well, was yes, I know. <laughs> you're using it as an example. Of surrendering to, to God, that means... So, uh, Okay, 
Actually, let me tell you why, why there is uh, it's a common argument they give some time, no? I imagine Prabhupada was preaching in America during the Vietnam War about the war of Kurukshetra and all this was very difficult, you know, time to preach about this, you know. So even Prabhupada said, well, you voted for your government, you know, so you have to do what the government asks you since you voted for them. Wasn't a popular idea at the time, I can assure you. But we tell people, actually Krishna wanted peace because he offered the Kurus peace by giving the Pandavas, each one a village to rule and no more things demanded. They were supposed to have back the half of the kingdom. That's the right. But still, Krishna as the messengers of the Pandavas, he offered that we give, you give Pandavas only five villages, we avoid this war, we want peace. So the Pandavas will not be blamed for the war. Huh? So Dhritarashtra accepted. He said, it's a good idea, I agree with it. But the son, Duryodhana, said, no. If they want an inch of land, they have to fight for it. He was very greedy, very... Uh, so anyway, then Krishna start to point all Duryodhana's evil mind and defects and misdoing, trying to kill the panda so many ways. So Duryodhana asked the soldier, arrest Krishna. He wanted to arrest him. So Krishna laughed. You think you can arrest me? He took Bishwarup there in the same hall. So all like Bhishma and Dronacharya and other devotees were offering prayers. Even the Tarashtra's heart changed. He said, please Lord, allow me to see a glimpse of your Bhishma Roop. So he was given that chance. So Krishna told uh, uh, Dhritarashtra, why you don't put your son in jail if he's not obeying you? you know. But he was so attached to his son, he could not do the right thing because he was too attached. So sometimes you may have knowledge, you may know what is to be done, but because of great attachment, you can't do the right thing. That's the lesson. from. So Arjuna and Krishna wanted peace, they didn't want war. And nowadays, why there is so much violence and war in the world? Because we are killing animals by the millions in the slaughterhouses, and we expect to have peace in human society. No? killing babies in the womb before being born by millions all over the world and we expect to have peace in the society. So we are offering the real formula of peace. Stop the violence. If you want to have peace, stop killing the animals. Stop killing the babies, uh, the cows, the all animals. Uh, the formula, peace formula was given by Prabhupada. Bhaktaram yagya tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram suridam sarva bhutanam gyatavam shantim richati. Acknowledge God, Krishna, as the supreme enjoyer, supreme proprietor, and the best friend. Then you can have real peace. If we acknowledge God as the supreme enjoyer, then we, we don't want to compete with Him, trying to enjoy the material energy as we are the Lord and Master of it. No, we are not meant for that. We are meant to serve and become servant, eternal slave. But slave is happy if he has a good master. I mean, the servant of a king, he also get nice dress, nice food, nice room to live, because he's serving somebody very important. So to be a servant of Krishna is not a small thing, it's a very big thing. Even Prabhupada told one reporter, when he was asked, are you God? He said, no, I am a servant of God. Then Prabhupada, said, no, actually, that is very great thing, very big thing. I'm trying to be a servant of God. Mm -hmm. Yes. What is Bhavani What is to make the world peace? Make everybody chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> you know, when Prabhupada went to Venezuela, he visited Venezuela in 1975. Uh, at that time, he said, he said, 
It's very nice tonight we have Gordney Tai, these two Prabhus with us. There is a nice song, Can You Follow Me? He wanted to sing a song for them. That song of uh, Lochandas Thakur. Paramo Koruna Pahondvijana Nitai Gaura Chandra Tavabatar Sarashiromani Kebala Nanda Kanda That they are so merciful, Paramo Koruna, the best of all twice born, uh, crest jewel of all the Brahmanas. And, uh, and they gave a process which is simply blissful, Ananda Kanda, Kebala Ananda Kanda, chanting, dancing and feasting and hearing about Krishna. Huh? But as soon as Prabhupada chanted the first two words, Paramo Koruna, his voice shocked, he couldn't sing anymore. He, 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 he laid his head back on the asana and we could see a stream of tears coming from his eyes. And after a few uh, minutes, he came back to external consciousness and he said, Paramo Koruna, Lord Chaitanya is so merciful. Because if you would have come like Krishna to kill demons, practically speaking, nobody will be left in Kali Yuga. <laughs> but he came to, evil, to kill the evil spirit of the people. He said in Kali Yuga, the demon and devotee are living in the same body. I uh, mean the mentality. Uh, so by the Harinam and the association of the bodies, Lord Chaitanya's plan is to kill the evil mentality of people. Make them devotees. That's the plan. And we should assist them in that plan. Mm -hmm. Trying to practice and preach at the same time. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Please pass. Yes. Hare Krishna. No, he didn't, he didn't accept for the reason that Shobari Muni prohibited him from going there. Since Shobari is also a devotee, so he respected the word of a great sage. That's the only reason. You know, Shobari Muni, he made offense against Garuda because he told him, because Garuda was, you know, fishing there from time to time, and he, once he grabbed the king of the fishes, ate it up. So the small fishes were sad that our king was taken. So Shobari Muni was meditating under the water, and uh, he saw the fishes sad, so feeling sympathy for the fishes, he cursed Garuda. You don't come here again, and if you come, you will die. So two of us, giving order to eternal associate of the Lord and threatening him with a curse. So out of respect for the great yogi, Garuda didn't want to go. Uh, the only reason. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Yeah. Yes. Surrender through the intelligence, using the intelligence. Like Bali Maharaj, he didn't surrender his intelligence when the Guru said, don't give anything to, to Vamanadev. Uh, he didn't surrender his intelligence. He surrendered through the intelligence. said, this Guru is giving me contradictory instruction. First he tell me to do yagyas, to become powerful by pleasing Lord Vishnu. Now Lord Vishnu come to ask me for alms. He said, deny him. What kind of Guru is that? So he rejected him. With his intelligence. With his intelligence. That's why he became Mahajan. One of the 12 authorities in Vedic knowledge. Because he didn't surrender his intelligence. He surrendered through the intelligence. Well, we should follow Shastra. We should follow Sadhu and Guru. And once Prabhupada was asked by a devotee, Prabhupada, 
now you're here, we can ask when you doubt, but in the future, when you are not here, what we shall do? If there is something, you know, to be decided, Prabhupada say, pray to Krishna to give you the intelligence. Uh, he's in the heart. He can give the intelligence. Hmm? Yeah. When that depends how much faith you have. Understand? Like once Prabhupada was gave, giving a pack to be sent by mail to one disciple. Disciple was telling Prabhupada, this, is, this pack is not 12 pack. Should I wrap more? tape around it or wrap it better, Prabhupada said, no, send it as it is. And the devotees kept arguing, but Prabhupada, I think it's better if you, I type it out with another, you know, thing around. Prabhupada said, even if the Guru is wrong, he's right. <laughs> Don't argue with the Guru. It's not, once you accept Guru and get initiated by him, you don't argue. Huh? Anyway, Guru is not supposed to give you instruction that you can't follow or, or is going to harm you in any way. The Guru is the best friend or well-wisher of the disciple. He always will give the best instruction unless if the Guru goes stray and give, you know, something against Shastra, then you can reject, of course. Otherwise, not, should not be done. For small details, I mean. Hmm? Anybody else? Yes, please, Pastor. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Man, giving the example of uh, this uh, Lord. He got the promise of Brahm, Lord Brahma. He gave uh, rendition to uh, so we think this all uh, is a benediction and according to that Lord decide and how I should appear and kill him. So this was Lord's view of the Hinalaspur uh, thought that I am intelligence but he doesn't know that the Lord is more intelligent than me. So the Lord showed him that what, whatever any how any human thing that I cannot be killed. So Lord showed that how you can be that's correct, because first he tried directly asking Brahma, I want to become immortal. So Brahma said, I myself not immortal, so I can't give you something I don't have. You have, to have. you have to ask something else. So he thought of tricking Brahma by asking immortality and directly. Huh? So, <laughs> Krishna is more intelligent <laughs> than any big demon. He tricked him. <laughs> Uh, it, it still killed him. So there were three lives, Hiranyaksha, Hiranyakashipu, then uh, Ravana, Kumbhakarna, and then last time, Shishupala and Dantavakra. Uh, and then went to back, back to Vaikuntha. Not in every creation that happened, only one time happened. But they, in Goralila, they became uh, Jagai Madai. Actually, they were, they were promoted because they surrendered fully to the Lord. They were promoted from Vaikuntha Prem to Goloka Prem. Because they got the association of Lord Chaitanya, they get Krishna Prem, higher, higher benediction, just because they surrendered and pleased the Lord with their fighting spirit. <laughs> huh? So, Everything about devotional service, most important thing is the intention, the mentality. That's the Lord is in the heart. Baba Grahi Janardana is in the heart. He can perceive everything, what we are thinking, feeling, willing, everything. So we have to go with full sincerity and in front of the Lord and, you know, offer ourselves as, please accept me as your eternal servant. Besides you, I have no other shelter, uh, no other maintainer, no other protector, only you. 
then Krishna accepts. If it is sincerely uh, said, done, then the Lord immediately accepts and protects that devotee. But it has to be sincere. It's not that we offer something to Krishna. Huh? We have to offer first ourselves to Krishna. Then everything you do is an offering to Krishna. Automatically. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. When another Shukur was killed, and next part he took as a Ravana, and then he took as a uh, Shishupala and all that. Yes. So in between, where, where, in, where he was, just like it was in Satyuga, then it was in Treta Yuga, then it is in Dwarpa Yuga. So in between, when he was killed, where was he? They were just waiting for in Brahma Jyoti. Usually when demons are killed, they go to Brahma Jyoti. Uh, so they went there, they waited their time. Their time in eternal life is different he, than here. Uh, one moment in the spiritual world can be millennium here. So <laughs> it's nothing like that. It's not, oh, I'm so bored, I have to wait until next yuga, you know. <laughs> it's not like that. <laughs> All right, so. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Shila Prabhupada, Kija, Gaur Premanandi, Haribo. It's always Bhakti Sundar Swami Maharaj, Kija.